Okay. And yeah, my name is Leandro Parent. Uh, I'm from Open Geohub. And today I will talk about uh, high performance computing and Python. And focus mostly in the context of the open data science uh, Europe and uh, raster uh, mulch array and, and raster uh, processing. So um, I'm online in the Slido link. So you can send questions at any time because the focus here, it's a hands-on training session. So you can just ask, your, ask the question and I will constantly check the slide the Slido to reply and answer the questions. And I also uh, put the link in the uh, chat. Uh, it, it, here is the short URL so you can access the slides. And yeah, I think we are uh, ready to go. Uh, before I start, I would like to uh, say that I'm sorry to not be uh, present in the conference. I had some uh, personal issues that uh, didn't allow me to go. So that's why I'm, I'm doing my, my session uh, remotely. But I hope you all enjoy the conference. And uh, there are uh, many multiple uh, interesting topics and training sessions and talks. So yeah, I've enjoyed the whole week. And let's start. So in this tutorial, uh, basically uh, I prepared a few uh, slides to explain about uh, kind of some conceptual background for uh, processing raster data, but mostly uh, multi-array structures. And so it will be about 20 minutes of uh, this conceptual explanation. And in the last slides of this presentation, you will find a link for the a Google Collab. And, and we, we can uh, do the, the hands-on part using this link. Uh, so I will do everything uh, with you, execute the code, and explain all the, all the steps. So in this uh, conceptual part, I will be explaining about uh, embarrassingly parallel problems. Uh, possibilities to optimize raster and processing workflow. Um, some, uh, just a bit about the uh, BLAS and LAPAC implementation. So if you work with any kind of uh, array processing, for sure you are using under the hood these uh, libraries. And uh, the last topic is how we can optimize temporal array reductions and numeric operations. So, uh, when we talk about embarrassingly, uh, embarrassingly parallel problems, uh, it's basically um, a problem that can uh, be divided in, into completely independent parts. So uh, if you think about it, uh, you can uh, have each part of this problem running uh, in parallel because, of course, you don't have any kind of uh, de dependence. And uh, on in an ideal case, for example, if you think on a raster data and each pixel, if you want to do some processing just for that pixel, you could have like on, on the limit, uh, one pixel being processed by each core, for example. So in this case, um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's idea, uh, hypothetically, it's possible to uh, scale up all the processing and really split all the parts of the problem in multiple uh, cores and, and CPUs. And you have some uh, other types of uh, problems. Not all the uh, problems, processing problems are uh, really completely independent. And you also have this uh, nearly uh, embarrassing parallel. So you, you have a kind of uh, parts of the problems are uh, you have some dependence, so you need to do some uh, reprocessing, and later you can scale up the processing for multiple uh, slaves, as we can see here in this um, uh, figure. So the most part of the 
raster uh, processing, it's a kind of nearly uh, embarrassing problem because you need to organize um, some uh, pre-process, pre-processing and post-processing steps uh, to to really uh, send, for example, a comment and do like a processing in each part of, of the pixels. So I will show some examples here and how uh, you, you can understand it with a concrete uh, example. So here you have, um, this is a time series uh, that we extracted from uh, AVHRR data. So since 82, and for this time series, for example, we apply a uh, smoothing filter. filter. So uh, of course you, you have all this data like organized uh, in, in mosaics. So uh, for each point of this plot, you have um, one image. And here I'm illustrating, for example, in the Amazon region, uh, the time series, right? So uh, to really scale up it, you need to, at some point you need to coordinate the process. So you need to have like a kind of master process that will split uh, parts of these images like chunks of the data in in different processing uh, parts and send it for the uh, multiple cores could be like um, uh, for example if you have just one cpu you can use all the your cores uh, eight cores for example and each core will process just part of the data so uh, uh, Brazil, uh, it will be processed by one core and Europe will be processed by other core. So, but this is just like a minor example if you think in a notebook. If you are working with a, like a really a high processing and um, computing infrastructure, you could have like thousands of cores. And as I explained it to you, if we have 96 millions of core, each core can manage one single pixel of this image. And this will be the most optimized way to do the processing. Of course, this is a hypothetical situation. Um, and, but uh, in, the, in the end, you can still have like thousands of cores and split parts of the chunks of the data for each of core. Uh, and here, we have an example of uh, this processing running in our uh, servers here. And for one server, we have 96 cores. And what we did, uh, basically we split uh, the word in different chunks of data, as I explained it, and each core is processing part of the data. And you can do it in several ways. You can split, for example, by country, by continent, but um, considering the, the, the processing needs here, it's not really necessary have like um, uh, any kind of administrative unit. So basically we divided the word in different uh, grids and like one grid and different cells, like regular cells. And we just send this uh, region uh, to the, uh, to each process, to each, to each core, sorry. So considering it, uh, of course, if you want to really optimize it, you could, uh, uh, and, and when I'm, I'm saying like optimize it, it imagine this uh, processing, like this is multiple filter, filter in, the, in the time series. Uh, if we want to uh, really speed up it, uh, we could of course use more CPU cores. Uh, we are limited for the number of cores in, in one single machine, right? So for example, here you are seeing 96 uh, cores and and actually in this machine, we have two uh, Axion Gold uh, chips, a uh, chip with uh, 24 like real cores and hyper thread. So basically it's 48 uh, threads and actually two uh, separate physical uh, uh, CPUs. So in this case, it's, um, it's, it's, it's really optimized, but of course I'm, I cannot put like, it's not uh, possible to insert in one single machine, 1000 cores, like considering this uh, regular uh, processing servers. So if you have like multiple servers and uh, I don't know, 10 servers like that, uh, of course you need to 
transfer the data through the network. So, and you need to balance it, right? So you could have multiple cores, but you need to considering also the speed to transfer the data and all these aspects. And the last possible uh, way to optimize it, it's actually improve the processing code. So you can keep the hardware as it is and just uh, change your code, like improving some algorithm and changing, for example, function. And there are several ways to do it. And of course, we will focus uh, here in this 30 part, how we, in, in, the, in this party, in this uh, part of how we can improve the processing code. And considering that, of course, uh, it's expensive, uh, change the code and, and at some point, in some situations, maybe it's not uh, possible, you need to re-implement like uh, from scratch some, some function. So, and, and maybe that's not the ideal situation, but you also have a kind of drop-in replacement alternative. And what it means, it means that you can keep your code as it is, like the original code and just replace some low uh, level uh, library. So for example, if you use Python and for sure you already uh, uh, use it or uh, heard about the NumPy uh, library, you can replace uh, some uh, C uh, a function that optimize, for example, uh, the way that the NumPy operations are performed in a, in a low level library. And if you do it, you can keep your code uh, in Python as it is, and just replace like a piece of software that it's responsible to do the, the, the hard work and to process kind of low level mathematical operations. And this kind of uh, uh, optimization, it's, uh, it's uh, really cheap and can produce good uh, results. So we call it it as drop-in replacement, but of course you can also implement your, or all your code from scratch and with Python, you can implement parts of the code in C, integrating it with Cyton, for example. And this is all uh, uh, a new code implementation. So considering this drop-in replacement, we have uh, basically, uh, we have actually several options, and but it's important to understand these two um, libraries. So we have the BLAST, it's basically linear algebra subprograms. It's a C library to provide a set of routines for basic vector and matrix operations. And also we have the LAPAC, it's a linear algebra package. Uh, it's a Fortran 90 library. So to solve linear equations. And these two libraries, they are actually pretty the standard uh, when you think in a, in a numeric operation. So, uh, and these, as I said, these libraries are kind of low level uh, library. So all the like uh, uh, higher uh, level programming languages like R or Python, they use it uh, under the hood. So you can, uh, uh, you can really replace uh, the implementation of these libraries and you can optimize part of your code. I will show some examples of how to do it. But the important part here is as this, Two libraries are pretty standard. They defined some uh, really uh, well-known interface. So you have the same method signatures independent of the implementation. That, that's the why it works if you change one implementation to another and you can still uh, execute the same code because everything is um, uh, tidy by the, the same method signature. And when I say method signature, it's something like this, like X dot, it's the name of the method. Here are the parameters. And you have like this same signature, but with the different implementations uh, on a C and in Fortran 90. And considering it here, we have some options that you can uh, evaluate. Uh, we did it internally and I will show the result of our benchmark. So you have R and Python, and these are really like high level libraries and programming language frameworks. And, and inside of this uh, R and Python, there are several libraries that use this LAPAC and BLAST, as I said, considering the same in the common method interface. And you can just replace, for example, um, 
the OpenBLAST implementation for Intel MKL, and you have the same signature, method signature, and doing it, uh, you can uh, have a better performance. You can also test, for example, the NVIDIA implementation. So for example, we, we didn't test it uh, yet, but uh, you have the same uh, method signatures as I explained it, uh, implemented by NVIDIA and compatible with CUDA. So for example, uh, any kind of operations that you can perform in NumPy, if you use this uh, NVIDIA implementation, they will be automatically uh, automatically uh, paralyzed and uh, executed in a GPU. So uh, of course you need to have a GPU to do it, but it's a way to uh, also optimize the processing, but you need to have a, a, a hardware here. For the Intel MKL, uh, as the, it's an Intel library, uh, MKL it's MAT uh, kernel library, uh, you need to have an Intel uh, CPU. Uh, the most part of our internal uh, computing is based in, in Intel. So that's our current uh, the BLAST implementation, BLAST and Laplace implementation. But you also have other uh, open source implementation, open BLAST and AMD is trying to develop these two uh, uh, libraries. Uh, that also, it's also an option, but uh, the last time that I tested it one year ago, uh, it, it, it broke in the same, in the, in the middle of the process. So I will show the results. Okay, so considering that use case that I presented, so this smoothing filter and also kind of gap filling in these times, in, in that time series, considering the AVHRR data, and uh, we we have we had a code at the time running in R, and uh, as I said, uh, we just replaced these three uh, uh, low-level libraries using the same code. So it's a really a dropping uh, replacement. So without any modification in code, we discovered that in, in our R code, uh, we discovered that MKL it's three times faster than OpenBLAST for this specific application. Of course, you could, you could uh, have a different application and maybe the result, maybe no, for sure the result will be, will be uh, different. And so um, it, the best, uh, the suggestion here, it, it's really uh, benchmark yourself, your, your processing considering uh, what you want to optimize. In, in our case, we did it because uh, we were uh, deciding about uh, Intel CPU processors and AMD uh, CPU processors. In the end, we just uh, we have uh, everything running in Intel. Uh, you will also find some like blog posts uh, explaining that it's doable and possible run MKL in AMD. But this is just a rack, so uh, you can try to do it. But it's for a production work. It's not. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't advise it because MKL. It's really uh, optimized and use some specific uh, functionalities and resource uh, that are available just in the hardware of the Intel. So uh, it's maintained by the Intel developers. So you could try do some hack like that to run MKLEM in D, but it's not ideal uh, and advisable for uh, a production environment. Okay, so considering it, um, we, we will test uh, now how we can uh, optimize some of the, of the, the array operations that we have in, in Python. It's for some of them, it's a kind of drop in replacement, not as I presented here. And this is just a, uh, an introduction and like some uh, conceptual background to understand how you can optimize it. But for some of the libraries that we will present here, we will focus in bottleneck, Numic, Xpre, uh, in Numba, for example, for Numba, you, you need to really uh, uh, rewrite part of, 
of your function, but it's not something that it's uh, it will uh, really require a lot of effort uh, because it's 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 really close the way that uh, these three libraries works with the the NumPy uh, library. So uh, you can I will. I stop the presentation here. So you can click in this link. And so you will see the same uh, script uh, as me. And it's a public script. So before you start it, it's important to create your own copy to your and drive so please remember to click in this button and now i'm working in a copy of my of the script and yeah i hope every everyone uh, could access it so just send a question or let me know uh, if you have any problem. So again, uh, in the last slide of the presentation, you have this link. With this link, uh, you will open a Google Collab with all the code that we will execute during this tutorial. And you can just copy to Drive to have your own copy and execute it in a proper way. Okay, so now in this, uh, uh, in, your, in your copy of the script, uh, if you scroll down, you see that there are, uh, all the cells are like uh, executed, right? So you need to uh, click here, clear all outputs. So now we will have a clean version of all the code that we will test. And again, clear all outputs. And you can click here to start the, the runtime environment and really uh, execute the code. So again, clear all outputs and just click here to start the runtime. I will increase my font. Okay. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure if everyone here is familiar with the Google Collab but uh, here the Google Collab, basically you have a kind of uh, small uh, virtual machine. You can see the, the source of, of here. So basically you, every uh, machine has a kind of, a kind of a space, a specific space in disk and uh, memory. Uh, and it's important to explain that we will download some data to here. So and this is a completely empty environment and every, every data that you will uh, execute and do the test needs to be downloaded and organized in this environment. So, and if you want to um, keep or uh, save some of the outputs that we will produce considering data outputs, you need to download it. Because when you close the Google Collab, everything will be uh, wiped up and deleted. And basically you need to uh, rerun the whole script again to produce the same output. So and considering it, uh, this script, uh, it's divided in three main steps. So the first step is we need to install and prepare the environment. So we need to add some libraries that we will use. And I will show to you how to do it. And after the libraries and the uh, environment, we need to prepare the data. 
So we will access the data uh, that it's available in our spatial temporal asset uh, catalog. So it's basically a public URL where you can access, for example, uh, different raster layers and just clip it using the code that I, I will provide here and download it for the Google Colab environment. And the last part, it's actually the optimization. So we will execute some uh, uh, multi-array functions considering these three libraries and uh, implement a benchmark. So that's the, the uh, main, th these are the main steps. So let's uh, start. Okay, I'm ready to back. So just checking, are, are you listening to me? Is everything okay? Great. So yeah, sorry about it. Uh, yeah, I will be a bit more uh quick uh because of the time so basically uh, i was uh explaining about the structure of the notebook and uh, the tutorial so we will have uh, the first part uh, the, we will set up the environment and the libraries and we will set up the data and to set up the data we will use the stack uh, our stack um, catalog and basically accessing several cloud optimized geotiffs and we will do the optimization considering uh, the these three libraries and comparing the the time so the, the the execution time so should do to be to set up the libraries where in the context of the open data science uh, europe we developed uh, a eu map a uh, package uh, you, if you click here, you can see the package. And basically, we have several uh, functions to do gap filling, to access data, and implement different uh, parallelization strategies. And in the context of this tutorial, we will access uh, the raster data and save the local rasters using these functions. It's just a, a helper for. Uh, to access like multiple raster layers and uh, it's a wrapper for the raster you basically but it, with one single line you can access multiple rasters and uh, organize the data so to do it uh, you need to uh, install the library like that and we will also use the ipy leaflet to select some uh, region of interesting to download the data so just execute it and yeah it's better if i create a copy as i did you can start uh, you can execute this uh, line here i will just create an, a new copy to have the same uh, environment as you Okay, yeah, here I'm cleaning all outputs and I'm creating this. Great, and so here basically we, we are installing the IPy and flat and we are installing also the UMAP library. And for the UMAP library, we created a specific branch to match the Python dependence with the collab. Uh, because in Colab we have some uh, limitations, so basically we, we modified some of the dependencies. It's important also to mention to you that we we also prepared a, a Python uh, environment to develop, like for GIS and geospatial uh, applications. And here you will have like the GDAO uh, three. Uh, we are changing the 
the, the libraries here. But this is just a Docker uh, image that you can use to uh, develop your own applications. And it's, it's really simple. And here we have um, JupyterLab uh, ready to go with GDAO, Raster.io, all the um, scikit-learn uh, um, li library and all the machine learned libraries that you uh, possible and need. So um, we use it internally, but considering that uh, uh, it's, it's important to have the same uh, environment for, for everyone in the training session, we uh, choose to, to use Colab but uh, you can use local uh, if you are familiar with Docker. So here we have uh, uh, the libraries are installed. So you need to restart the runtime. Uh, you will see the uh, next uh, uh, parts of the tutorial. You need to prepare the, uh, we will use this uh, magic uh, cell, time it just to benchmark and compute the time and the execution time. So you need to update also the IPython version because Collab has a pretty old uh, IPython version. And yeah, you just need to execute it. And you also need to execute the, uh, install the, this Pi stack. So uh, I will open our uh, Open Data Science Europe uh, stack and uh, implementation uh, in a second. But the PyStack, it's just a, a library to access this uh, stack, the catalog with all the raster layers and select some specific layers that we will uh, process here. I will restart the environment again. And the last step is just import all the libraries. So this is just a warning. Uh, because of some uh, dependence between uh, for Colab and UMAP, but uh, when you execute these um, these functions here, it's basically yeah you should uh, shouldn't see any uh, error. So it means that everything is uh, installed and ready to go. So uh, yeah, you install several libraries now, and we can proceed with the. Uh, data set preparation. So um, this uh, can take a while. So I will execute now. In the meanwhile, I will explain. So to, to the data set preparation, uh, as I mentioned to you, the, the uh, yep, yeah, it's finished. As I mentioned to you, we will have uh, we need to prepare that data and we need to access some uh, remote data, some uh, raster layer in a public URL. And we need to prepare the data and save it here in the Google Colab because we don't have any data uh, in this environment. So uh, the first, this, this second part, it's just to prepare the data. So, and to do it, um, don't worry too much about the stack. We will have a session about it uh, tomorrow. So, but you, you can enter here and yeah, I need to update it. It's stack open data. This stack open data science group. This one. But if you click here, also you can access directly the, the stack. So basically in our uh, stack, uh, it's a spatial and uh, temporal asset catalog. We have uh, almost all the layers that we produced uh, in the context of the Open Data Science Europe. And you, for all these layers, you have uh, metadata and you can see a thumbnail. And here's the metadata. And this is just a browser. Uh, to access the, the stack. But most important, when you enter here, you have multiple assets and you have this URL here. So basically, with this URL, you can access directly from uh, Python, R, uh, Quant.js, it doesn't matter. This is a 
a really open and public URL where you can access the data through a cloud optimized geotiff. So this is total prepared. So you have one mosaic for the whole Europe and covering uh, uh, all the all the Europe. So he, he, and you can access and visualize it uh, in a in a fast way because it 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 was prepared by us to provide like uh, different overviews and this pyramid layer and that it's inside of the cloud optimized geotiff format so what we did here it's basically considering this url so this is our stack url as i mentioned to you you have a session about stack and all the concepts tomorrow so this is just like a really a fast uh, introduction and let me see just if it okay there is a question here let's see um okay and uh, i'm not sure why <laughs> why we need to restart the the runtime so some of the libraries uh, change and for example, for for the EU map, I'm I'm not sure actually because uh, some yeah for for EU map I'm not sure because maybe some of these libraries use some uh, uh, operation system library, but for the IPython it's necessary because uh, when you update the I the, the IPython you need to create a new session because the the runtime was. Uh, started with the old old version of ipython i think it's the version uh five if you click click here you can see some uh, information about uh the previous version used by ipython by ipython so in this case it's necessary but in the case of you map i'm not sure uh specifically why okay so let's continue and so considering this URL, this is actually the URL to access the stack. As I mentioned to you, this is just a browser. And if you copy this URL, you can see all the um, layers in a JSON structure following the step standard. And here I basically created a access to the catalog providing this URL. And I'm retrieving all the layers, all the assets that are inside of this uh, collection. So we have the red and NIR band of the Landsat. And we have the percentile 50 and the percentile and, and 50 also for the near. And here we created all the URLs. And so and the, to create these URLs, basically I accessed uh, all the uh children's here of this uh, catalog considering uh all the assets considering the the red collection um so basically it's it's the same thing that i enter here and copy all the of course it's just a programmatic way to do it go here and copy this url for all the layers all the the periods that i have here and here you can see the first URL and the last. And if you check this URL, we have a, a well-defined file name convention with uh, the name of the product, the, the, uh, the, the surface reflectance band, and the reflectance band, spectral reflectance band, and here the date. So it's basically starting in and the, uh, we are calling the winter, but it's actually the first uh, quarterly of 2000 and finishing in 2020. And you have it for the red and the inner. So considering that this is a cloud optimized geotiff covering the whole Europe, you can use this IPI leaflet to really uh, zoom in and select some specific area. So, and this area that you will select, uh, it will be used to clip all these remote files and save them locally. 
and we will use these files uh, in the next uh, steps. So basically, I will zoom in here. And as I mentioned here, please don't uh, insert a really a large area because uh, it will take uh, a lot of time. And the idea here, it's re really go to a specific area. This is a web map you can navigate uh, in any place of the world and just select uh, like a city or uh, I don't know, some forest area close to the city. And here I will select Farningen. And basically you just need to click here, draw a rectangle and draw the, the region of interesting, the region of interest. And so this line it's here, I will not explain this uh, in detail. So it's just a way to uh, create a IPy leaflet instance here and access some and provide some controls, but it's it's basically a way to interact with the map. And here I'm accessing it uh, through uh, the draw control, and I'm just getting the uh, geometry that I draw. And here I can see the bounds. So, and as it explained it here, I need to get convert this bounds to. Uh, a projection system considering the cloud optimized uh, geotiff. So, and you can see here that I'm doing using this pi proj transformer. And basically I know that the IPI leaflet it's giving the coordinates in WGS 84. And here I'm converting it to uh, the uh, projection system of the first URL. So here I'm just accessing directly with raster.io. So if you, you use raster.io at some point, you can provide a local file, but you can also provide like a URL. And the URL that I'm providing, it's basically the first one of the red layer, this one. And here I'm converting it. And after this conversion, I'm creating a window object. So uh, if you want to know more about it, you, you can access this link but it's basically a abstraction in RASTRIO to access, uh, to provide like a, a, a window for a specific raster considering uh, the, the dimensions of the raster and the size that you want to access. And here with this window object, basically I'm using the read raster function. I will just execute it. It could take a, a while. So with this read raster function, this is an EU map uh, library. The, it's a EU map function uh, of uh, that we developed, and basically it's accessing all the red URLs. The first one, not all. Here I'm just limited because of the uh, Apollab uh, memory limitation and I'm passing the window. So if you click here, you can access the documentation, but this is a kind of, as I mentioned, it's a helper function to read multiple rasters. So here I'm reading 20 red bands and so I will just click. I'm, accessing 20 uh, red uh, URLs, so different dates, sending this window. And I'm, I'm doing it in parallel. And if you do it, you can see that this is the size of, the, of my data. So in, in the space, and here it's the time. So this function is responsible to read each individual files, put it together in a three-dimensional array. So it's a helper function. And now with this um, uh, helper function, basically I have a NumPy uh, array, a three-dimensional array, and I can save it uh, directly in the uh, my local environment. In this case, it's the Colab. 
Here I'm just passing the work tier. And to save the raster, it's important to pass like a base raster, as I'm, I'm saying here. You can check the documentation of the function here. Uh, again, it's a UMAP function. We use it a lot in the project. So, and basically, if you do it, uh, it will consider all the projection system, pixel size, everything from this base raster, and it will save all the red file, uh, red raster, uh, all this um, NumPy three-dimension structure, it will save in the same structure uh, in the local folder. So if you do this, you can enter here, you can access here and you can see all the files that were generated. Let me see if we have a question. Okay, no questions, okay. So now we are ready to go and it's good because we still have half an hour. So, and the data is here in the collab and you can download if you want. It's just a GeoTIFF for the red band clipped from that big mosaic that I show in the stack considering this region. So now it's time to start like the proper uh, optimization. And to do it, basically, we will have two uh, types of operation. One is the uh, array reduction. So because here we have a three dimension array with the third dimension being the time. So array reduction, it's just operation where we have like a three dimension structure, for example, and we reduce it for a two dimension. So we apply some sort of mathematical operation in one uh, of the array of the dimensions, reducing it. So, and if you think about the data input and output, the data input, it's a three dimension structure and the data output, it's a two dimension structure, a two dimension array. Here, it's just a toy example. Uh, so considering this uh, two dimension uh, structure, I'm reducing it for uh, just one dimension. Uh, but of course we want to do it with a proper uh, data. And now we have the data locally. So I'm using this uh, find files function to access all the red uh, files here. And I'm sending now to the read raster, I'm sending a list of local files instead a list of URLs. And for this, I have now here, it's of course, it, I, I already had the data uh, before because I use it to save, but uh, considering that I want you, uh, you can execute this step from here if you have the data. So it's just a, a, a different way to read the data, but now in a, that uh, considering our local folder. And I also created this info function here uh, just to present the shape of the array that we read, the data type and the size. So, and, and now we have the red data here and to do it, uh, we will evaluate now the, yes, we, we will use this time ID magic cell, this thing here. If you click, you'll see more documentation, more about the documentation, but it's just, uh, it's a, it's a tool, it's a command in the, of the Jupyter notebook just to benchmark uh, some uh, specific Python function. Basically, it's, it's pretty generic. So the first thing is considering this red data, we have it here, like it's a really a small chunk of data, but we have 20 dates. So, and for each year we have four images, so it's about five years of data. And considering it, uh, we have this uh, uh, 
three dimension structure and we are calculating the a median operation in the uh, time dimension so considering all per pixel all the pixels considering uh, a median uh, value we will reduce and calculate the median considering these 20 uh, observations available and the output will be a kind of median image for these five years of red band that I have. It's a, uh, it's a common operation to do in this uh, data cube structure, in this multi-dimension array structure. And here I'm just using a NumPy uh, implementation. And I'm using this uh, N -N, uh, N -N, uh, function just to ignore the node data. So, and if you check the time here, this is the time considering five repetitions. So the same operation was performed five times and you have the average time of this uh, uh, median operation. And here is the standard deviation. Okay, this is our baseline. So it's how we perform this operation in NumPy. So, but we have a alternative library uh, this is a fast numpy uh, implementation of some functions you don't have all the functions available here uh, it's important to know about it but uh, the most part of the functions you can find here in the uh, in the documentation so this is a kind of drop in replacement because you can see it's the same uh, it's the same signature, so the same name of the method and the same uh, parameters. Uh, and for this operation, we have uh, 21 uh, milliseconds here. And with a regular NumPy operation, we have 80. So yeah, it is about four times fast uh, with the bottleneck here. And again, it's the same data, the same operation, and this is a nice improvement. And if you select a bigger area, like a large area, not too large, because of course you need to download and save the data locally. But if you select a large area, probably it will be uh, faster. So I did it with several uh, uh, chunks of data in different size, and you can see this improve. And the point here is considering that uh, if you, Considering that explanation to process in parallel and send different chunks of the data for each CPU, uh, if you have like an optimization like that, you will. Uh, it's a nice way to reduce the processing time and perform like um, some some operation in in, in for the whole Europe uh, in, in a really fast way. So, and without change too much the code, it's just a matter to change the package here. So, but again, uh, we have now two uh, data. So, and to really understand if it makes, uh, I don't know, maybe the bottleneck uh, lo implemented some, some operation to reduce the precision or something like that. So uh, in this case, we are also testing the, if the, the arrays are really equal. So here you have the result of the bottleneck and the result of the NumPy. And I'm using a NumPy function to really uh, check if the array is exactly the same considering all the values and yes, it's the same. So these, uh, the guys that developed the bottleneck, they did a pretty nice job here and uh, implemented in a uh, fast way some of the common uh, operations in of NumPy. Let me check the chat because I'm not without the notebook. Okay, no more questions. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and so we also have a different library called 
Numba. It's a more complex and you have really much more functionalities than bottleneck and you can check it uh, later. It's a, there, there is a pretty extensive documentation, but for the context of this uh, tutorial, uh, I will basically uh, implement the, the same operation considering uh, this uh, GIT decorator. So basically it's a way to uh, parallelize different um, NumPy operations inside of this chunk of the data. So for example, if you're considering this as this number of pixels, uh, internally Numba split it uh, in, in parallel and but you need to modify the code to really allow it uh, the execution of this method. So what I did here, I created a function called reduce, and I'm using this decorator with the option of to parallel. And but the here it's a bit uh, different, and you need to uh, understand that. It's an important part that uh, Numba doesn't, uh, as far as I know, doesn't uh, manage like multi-dimension uh, structure. So in this case, we have a three-dimension structure, like not multi-dimension, more than three dimensions. It's it's a bit tricky. So what I did here, and that's that was the way that I found. Uh, it's basically I'm. Um, changing the dimensions. So I'm combining the both spatial dimensions, longitude and latitude, X and I, I'm combining in one single dimension, like a kind of a big table, right? And the last dimension I'm keeping as the time. So, uh, and basically I'm changing it like that, the shape, I'm changing the shape of the data input I'm sending to this reduce, reduce function. And inside of this reduce function, uh, Numba will parallelize. So you need to use this P range function. It will parallelize all the pixels. So it will use all the cores. And they also do it in a really fast way. So they have some uh, in internal optimizations also. And here I'm calculating the median. I'm putting this uh, array and I'm returning the result. So this is a uh, pretty simple function, but for example, if you want to change the operation to use like median instead to, I don't know, some uh, average max, you can just change here and keep the same uh, uh, function. So when you do it, Again, it will uh, execute five times, and you can see that it's a slight slower than uh, than the bottleneck. And here it's just to explain that this is the input in a three dimension size. And here is the input for Numba in a two dimension size. So the first dimension, it's the longitude and latitude combined. And now again, you need to check the result. And you can plot it and compare. Uh, we already did a comparison here, but it's the same image. And here you have the uh, like the time. So basically, the bottleneck is the winner here. But uh, for some reason, Numba scale is better. So what I'm trying to say, if you had like a, a bigger portion of data, a large larger area here, probably Numba would be uh, better. I did this test um, locally and using, for example, 1,000 by 1,000 uh, tile, a region of interest with 1,000 by 1,000 pixels, and it, it uh, number was uh, faster, but uh, maybe it's something in the collab, but what really matters here, it's actually that uh, 
the bolt library are uh, faster than the, the regular implementation of NumPy. And of course, NumPy, it's a bit more tricky. And so for example, uh, mostly I'm, I prefer use bottleneck uh, uh, because it's, it's much more uh, faster to implement and integrate in my workflow. Okay, so this is a array reduction example. Let me see if I have questions. Okay, no. So I will proceed. And now it's the, uh, the numeric operation. So uh, the numeric operation example, it's just, uh, uh, it's, it's a different uh, operation as I defining here. Uh, you will provide a two-dimensional array structure uh, in this book example, but in our case will be a three dimension. And you will calculate some uh, mathematical operation, numeric operation, and you have the same output. So the data input, it's the same of the data output. So for example, we will use in this tutorial, uh, the near and the red band to derive a spectral index, index uh, vegetation index, a new one, and we will save the result. So, and here it's just like a toy example uh, of how uh, you can uh, think you can have two data sets and just perform some operation on it and have the, the output. So, yeah, I will change here to 20. I, are, to, I already executed with 40, but uh, I, I tested several times this and sometimes uh, the collab crashed. So uh, I will change it and, and put in the uh, official link uh, after the presentation. So you can have the proper value uh, later. So here I'm reading the uh, red data and the inner R data. And to we will use these two uh, spectral values, spectral bands, we will use to calculate um, vegetation index. So there is a pretty new uh, vegetation index that it correlates better with the biomass and has less saturation uh, in the higher values called uh, near V. So near infrared reflectance of the rest of vegetation. So if you click here, you can see the publication. And basically I'm using this index. So, and here is the formula. And if you think uh, in, a, in a NumPy array structure, you, you can derive this index in a pretty straightforward way as we are doing here. And yes, here you have the time and it's, it's just like, some regular uh, and mathematical operations. And okay, we can do it with Numba also. Uh, and for, for Numba, you need to use a, new, a different decorator. So in, in this decorator, it call it vectorize. So because in this case, you will have the same out, the, the input and the output as with the same input, with the same size, sorry. So the input and the output will have the same uh, size, the same dimensions. So it's important uh, use a different uh, decorator and it will, uh, inside here, you can just do the same operation that you are uh, performing in like outside with a regular NumPy but uh, Numba will take care of, of the optimization here. So let's execute it. Okay, it's mm, almost four times. So same uh, speed up. And now, Again, it's really important to check if it's exactly the same data. Otherwise, I don't know, maybe Numba it's doing something uh, and change uh, the, the precision of your data, but it's not the case here. So again, they did a pretty nice job. 
And now you can also test with the new expert. So uh, if you click here, you can see the, uh, the documentation reference. And yeah, it's a different library and it works in a different uh, way. Basically, it only has one single method. Uh, they, there are other methods, but the main uh, method is the evaluate. So you can send the expression for the evaluate, sending some uh, parameters if you want. If you don't send any parameter, it will take directly from the uh, Python scope. But here, for uh, like to improve the readability of the, the code to understand better what we are doing here, I'm just sending the near and the red parameter. And you have this uh, optimization uh, argument. So there's, if you click here, you will see different uh, arguments that you can send to the evaluate. But basically, doing it. Uh, again, it's the same uh, thing. So basically, you have a expression that will be executed. Uh, and again, yeah, in this case, the result is not uh, impressive. And I will check here the benchmark. So yeah, it's a bit slower. So and. I again I did it with different uh, areas. So if you increase the area, probably you could uh, probably know for sure you have difference. But uh, and I'm not maybe here in the collab could be the and could be some limitation in the in the runtime. But when I executed it in my local machine, I got a similar time uh, of Numba. So. But yeah, it's important to test. And if you run in your local notebook, probably you have a different uh, result. So, and again, I did the uh, evaluation here and I, I checked if the values are uh, exactly the same. And now, yeah. Here and again, everything that we did here, it was for the 20 uh, images. So if you if you look the the output, uh, we are calculating these um, spectral indices for all the for all the layers. So basically, uh, it's not, it's not like the first image or the second image. So again, it's a three-dimensional structure and we are calculating this vegetation index considering the inner and the red uh, band and deriving a vegetation index for the whole uh, structure. So in this case, it's 20 observations and five years. And so I created this helper function here just to plot uh, the data. So, and here you can see the uh, vegetation index for the year 2000. And I think we will have the 2002 because we are uh, accessing just the, uh, uh, the, the first five years. And so basically the, this data uh, structure has all the, yes, has all the, the uh, the result and here so to finish what we will do is considering the the, the layers that we calculated this vegetation index we can save it and i will use again the save raster function so we will have a, a base raster uh, the output file I will send the uh, vegetation index uh, structure. Here you can see that it's it's a three-dimensional structure with 20 dates. Uh, I will send the window that we define it. So it's important and uh, send the window here because uh, 
in this case, yeah, in this case, no, because it's the same dimension. Uh, but if in if you use like a bigger file, like a mosaic for the whole Europe, as we did, it's important to send it. And here I'm writing the files. And now I have the uh, vegetation index. And you can download this uh, file and check locally in the QuantGIS. So yeah, basically we tested all the libraries. And in our case here, the winner uh, for, for the numeric operation, the winner was Numba. Uh, again, for a collab environment, if you test in a different uh, environment, uh, considering the, the hardware could be different. If you change the, the size of the data input, it could be also uh, different. And for the array reduction, the winner was the bottleneck. And let me check the chat. I hope you still with me. And yeah, that's my yeah that my last that's my last slide. And sorry about the problem with my uh, workstation. We still have a uh, some couple of minutes to uh, to questions and comments. And thank you for your attention. Okay, so let's see. Okay, yeah, I think you followed everything. <laughs> so for the comments that I'm seeing here, and yes, you can access these links uh, later. We will share uh, everything also through our uh, uh, GitLab repository. So you can also test it locally in, outside of Colab. It will work in the same way. Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, we have now a coffee break and we are looking forward for your next part of the presentation. So thank you. Okay, thank you.